I'm going to do what our governments have been unwilling or unable to do. Effective immediately, I'm going to rid our planet of all nuclear weapons. Hey world, this is Cash here with another movie review and I'm going to continue my Superman Hero franchise movie collection or whatever you want to call it for Superman 4. Dun dun dun. Yeah, Superman 4, let's get right into the review. And what do I think of it? Dreadful. Dreadful, absolutely dreadful. Where can I even start, guys? If you're wondering how the Superman movie franchise could have gone so horribly, tragically wrong as to give us Superman 4, the quest for peace, all you really need to know is that the after the underrated Superman 3 left theaters, the rights for the series were soon bought out by none other than Mayhem Golem and Yoram Globus, if I'm pronouncing that right. You remember those guys at company responsible for canon films, the guys who made Delta Force, Firewalker, Detective School Dropouts, and I think Aliens from LA, just to name a few. Oh man, oh this is so terrible. Once they got their grubby hands on soups, all better all bets were off guys. The Golden Globus name was like a curse and the drop-in quality would remain the steepest until Blues Brothers 2000 um, rolled around a decade later I think. The special effects budget seemed to be mere fraction of the originals in my opinion right down to the opening credits which looked like a pale of cartoony um, an imagination of now classic flying names kind of like Star Wars montage of earlier films the screenplay is laughable the action is pathetic and what I mean by pathetic when you guys watch this movie you know what I mean and somehow everyone forgets how they act hell even the poster sucks with Christopher Reeves head wildly out of proportion to his body just look at it if you don't believe me Speaking of Reeve guys, he, he gets credit for a co-writing story along with screenwriters Lawrence Connor and Mark Rosendale, who both went on the Penn Mercury Rising and Mighty Joe Young, you're welcome. <laughs> and he's to blame for the loopy premise in which Soup takes it upon himself to rid the planet of nuclear missiles. You see, some kid thinks the best way to end the Cold War, these were the region years after all, I mean, come on was to ask Superman to disarm everybody and the Man of Steel breaking his vow to stay out of such political matters and eager to oblige. oblige. Note, I don't know why Superman would only concentrate on nukes and not other forms of weapons. I don't know why getting rid of nukes would be the single thing that would end all conflict on the planet. I mean, I don't know why when Superman addresses the United States nations, everyone cheers when he announces his plan. Aren't these the same governments that refused to disarm the days before? God damn, my brain hurts. Fortunately, we have criminal mastermind Lex Luthor, played by Gene Hackman once again, who recently busted out of prison with the help of Morionic nephew Lenny, played by John Cryer, and his single greatest career embarrassment. Lenny's job is to be an idiot. And his dialogue consists of two alternate phrases, like, oh, wow, and it's the dude of steel. And if by the end of the film, you do not want to, you just want to punch Lenny in his nuts, there may be something wrong with you. Anyway, Lex steals a strand of Superman's hair and uses its DNA to create a solar-powered supervillain named Nuclear Man, played by Mark Pillar. Nuclear Man has Luther's voice and obeys Luther's commands, kind of like his bitch, but he also wants to punch a lot of stuff and then makes him dangerous. Very dangerous. He also looks like he always tried to squeeze a fart that just won't come out. <laughs> Which makes him look slightly less dangerous. Somehow the existence of Nuclear Man will make it easier for Luther to become an arms dealer, although I may have been in the bathroom for the scene that explains all this. <laughs> Guys, I need to know that. Seeking as I've seen this film at least 20 times, that might must always be the right scene for a potty break. I mean, come on, guys. You could wipe your ass with this movie. But the Luther as missile seller plot isn't nearly as fun as the Nuclear Man one, so I turn my attention elsewhere. 
Also, another thing I also want to say is there's a subplot involving the Daily Planet being bought out by tabloid magnet Sam Wedmaker or whatever the hell his name is, who turns the paper into a sleaze rag. The new boss has a daughter named Lacey, acting here with all the talent of beef jerky. I mean, who takes a liking to Clark Kent? This is set up for a wacky duffel date between Lacey and Clark and Lois Lane. Threesome and Superman. Can Soup juggle two women at once? I mean, come on, he's a man of steel. Fear not, the result is a scene worthy of Greg Brady. Here's a story about a Greg named Brady. About a family named Brady. Oh, whatever. Or maybe Jack Tripper. And yet we want more nuclear man? Hell no. And so we get him trying to kidnap Lacey, making this ominous threat the best piece of dialogue in the whole film. Where is that woman? If you don't tell me, I will hurt people. Nuki doesn't elaborate, so we leave wondering if he was planning a major purple nurple, a nasty wedgie, or just mean spirit insult. Oh, this fucking story just keeps chuggling along, wrapping up with a fight, an old Star Trek set that I think was supposed to be in the moon. Styrofoam rocks are hurled, punches are thrown, viewers are lured into a nice deep sleep. At one point in the film, Lex calls his nephew the Dutch Elm Disease of My Family Tree. Come on, Netlex, can you have named him something more stupider? The description is equally fitting in this movie, a sad final chapter for the Man of Steel and an otherwise brilliant movie franchise. That this movie is how the Superman movie legacy ended would be a depressing thought of this movie weren't so endlessly hilarious. So my point in verdict final for final verdict for this film is uh one out of five. Dreadful, laughable movie like Batman and Robin, but this one doesn't have nipples and badass and bat crotch. This one has just over the top dramatic stupidity. So, one out of ten, one out of five, dreadful movie would not recommend it. If you have it in your Man of Steel Blu ray collection, good for you. You know, you're a proud owner, like I own Batman and Robin, unfortunately, for the anthology collection. So, the next film I'll be reviewing f um, will be um, Superman Returns. Some people have different opinions, I do as well. So, hopefully you guys will stick out for that review. I appreciate all the comments, all the subscriptions. You guys are awesome. 245 subscribers of me being here for four months, that's ridiculous. I really appreciate the views and almost have 5,000 views already. Thank you for watching guys, I really appreciate it. This makes me wanna make more reviews for you guys and updates, so. Until next time, Critical Redemption is out. Out like a man of steel. That made no damn sense. Anyways, in the words of Lex Luthor, Nuki doesn't allow